2.5 billion dollars. That's how much money Microsoft spent buying Minecraft from Mojang. And the craziest part, that sum is less than half of the amount of money solely obtained from selling Minecraft accounts. If each account is $27 and over 200 million copies of Minecraft have been sold, that means that from accounts alone, Mojang have made around $5.4 billion worth of revenue. But even that number pales in comparison to the worth of a Minecraft world. Or does it? How much is a Minecraft world actually worth? If you consider all of its resources and its location in space as a habitable planet, how much is each Minecraft world really worth? Also, if you enjoy this video, then please do consider subscribing. A large percentage of you guys watching aren't, and it helps out a ton, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy. There are a couple of ways to go about answering this question. The first is the most obvious, to total up every naturally generating resource and just put a price on that. This really convenient graph and table on the Minecraft wiki showed the distribution of blocks in the overworld compared to their altitude, as well as the relative amounts per world. For example, in every Minecraft world, there are around 9.7 billion blocks of air, which makes sense since that would be around 63% of the entire world. So all we have to do to find the price of a Minecraft world is to total up every natural resource and multiply it by its respective real world price. This would seem very daunting at first just because there are so many blocks, but it doesn't have to be, because of Fee's Law. You may notice that that law has a very similar name to the channel you're watching right now, and you'd be right to think so because it's named after me. The law simply states that when you have an expression with many different terms, and you want to find the sum at a very large number of said terms, if you have a few terms that grow so immensely faster than everything else, you can write off the smaller ones as irrelevant and only focus on the bigger ones. For example, let's say you want to find out the number of living things on Earth. Sure, there are a lot of horses, even more cats, and even more humans, but there are just so many more bacteria than anything else. Every other animal will only be a tiny, tiny proportion of the total when compared to the immense number of bacteria. Pretty much negligible. In our context, while there are tons of other naturally generating blocks like fences and stairs, there are just so many more diamonds than anything else, and the price of diamonds is so much higher, all of the other smaller prices become obsolete, and we only have to focus on the valuables. Now that we have that in place, Let's actually calculate it out. For diamonds, doing some googling and we can find the mass of a cubic meter of diamonds is 3514 kilograms. Each diamond is one ninth of a cubic meter since nine of them make a block and a block is a cubic meter. So each diamond weighs in at a hefty 390.4 repeating kilograms, or 390,444.4 repeating grams. The price of a diamond per carat is anywhere from $2,500 to $18,000, so let's go with the lower estimate to be safe. A gram is 5 carats, so the price of a diamond per gram is $12,500. Multiplying that by 390,444 grams per Minecraft diamond, and we get that a singular Minecraft diamond is worth 4,880,555,555 US dollars. That means that with all of his net worth, Elon Musk, the richest person in the world, could only afford to buy 35 Minecraft diamonds. And there are 715,000 per Minecraft world. So when the dust settles in diamonds alone, the Minecraft world is worth more than 3.5 quadrillion US dollars. That is more than 37 times the GDP of the entire world in 2020. And this is just the lower estimate. We can carry out the same mathematics for all the valuables in Minecraft to find their price using cobalt as an equivalent for redstone and then multiplying those numbers by the amounts that generate per Minecraft world. And once you do all that, you are met with these results. A Minecraft world has $2.7 million worth of iron, $340 million worth of coal, 
$1.3 trillion worth of redstone, $26 trillion worth of emeralds, $42 trillion worth of lapis, and $250 trillion worth of gold. And together, a Minecraft world has 3.82 quadrillion US dollars worth of valuables. But what's most interesting and what you might have noticed is that 91.6% of that is just diamonds. A perfect example of Fee's Law in action. Nothing else can compare to the tremendous amount and value of diamonds, so a good estimate would have been just diamonds on their own. Even blocks like diorite, granite, and andesite, which spawn so often, come in at a couple billion dollars each. Which, don't get me wrong, is a lot of money, but nothing compared to diamonds. So while in theory we could look at everything in Minecraft from the worth of every stronghold to every stone block, it would all mean nothing in the face of diamonds. So is the Minecraft world worth 3.82 quadrillion US dollars? No, because we've only been considering the worth in terms of resources, but there's something even more important than all of that. Habitability. We can live on the Minecraft world, that must be worth a lot. And it is. Greg Laughlin, an astrophysicist in the University of California, Santa Cruz, devised a formula to calculate the value in US dollars of any exoplanet we discover. And we can apply this very complicated looking formula to the Minecraft world. But there is one problem. To use this formula, we have to find the mass of both the Minecraft world and the Minecraft sun the age of the Minecraft Sun, the temperature of the Minecraft world, and the apparent magnitude or brightness from Earth of the Minecraft Sun. <laughs> it sounds very fun, doesn't it? The temperature is surprisingly the easiest bit. Know it or not, biomes have their own temperature that dictate what biomes they spawn next to and if it will snow or rain in them. Using the weight of each biome and the temperatures listed in the Minecraft wiki, we get an average temperature of 0 0.568. 0 0.568 what? Sadly, there are no actual units to the temperature, which is a bit of a problem. However, going off the fact that it needs to be less than 0 0.15 Minecraft degrees for snow to spawn, and in real life it has to be less than 0 degrees Celsius for snow to quote, spawn, and there needs to be two Minecraft degrees for water to evaporate in the nether, and the evaporation point of water in real life is 100 degrees Celsius, we can get a formula for converting Minecraft temperature to Celsius. So from this point onwards, I hereby dub the Minecraft temperature unit as a degree fees. You're welcome. Which one fee is 45.94 degrees Celsius. So after all of that, the average temperature of a Minecraft world is 0.568 fees, or 22.595 degrees Celsius, and for my Americans, 72.67 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a pretty warm temperature and almost the exact average temperature of Madagascar. And holy, the nether is 100 degrees Celsius, or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That is hot. Very, very hot. Props to Steve for enduring that kind of heat. Hey guys, Editing Weefies here. Past Weefies was an actual idiot. Yeah, I know, big shocker. And he calculated average temperature instead of what you actually need to find, effective temperature. So yeah, apparently two very different things. Luckily, it actually doesn't make that much of a difference when you plug it into the formula because of how it's weighted, but if you are following along for whatever reason, do keep that in mind. It doesn't make that big of a difference, I got lucky this time. Okay, enjoy the video. Now that we have the temperature though, it all gets harder from here. We have to figure out the age of the Minecraft sun. Yeah, that sounds ridiculous. Since both the Earth and the Sun generate at the same time you learn in a world, we can assume that they have the same age. And all we have to do to find the age of the Sun is to find the age of the Minecraft Earth. Which is definitely easier said than done. There are a couple of ways to do this, and they all give pretty good results. The first is to look at the terrain. 
If you haven't noticed, Minecraft has these weird random patches of stone and dirt and diorite and andesite that seem to peek through the surface every once in a while. These are actually intentional and are called basins. They are based on the real life phenomena of geological shields. Geological shields in real life are large exposed areas of crystalline, igneous, and metamorphic rock, which date anywhere from 570 million to 3.5 billion years old. So we can consider that as one of the possible ages of the Minecraft world, and by association, the Minecraft Sun. Another way that we date planets is by using the craters on their surfaces. Since the rate of asteroids making impact has been about consistent for the last couple billion years, we can use it to date our Minecraft Earth. You may have also noticed these weird and random perfect and near perfect circles generating every now and then around the world. These are craters of meteors that have struck the Minecraft Earth. In an 8200 by 8200 area, we can locate two craters in a random new world. And assuming the rate of distribution is equal around the entire Minecraft world, we can guess that there are around 107 million craters in a single world. Using some very scuffed estimation of asteroid size based on impact crater, as well as this chart outlining the ratio of meteor mass to rate of impact on Earth, we can conclude that due to the number of craters, the Minecraft world is just about 10 billion years old. Which is very, very old, but on the same scale as our previous estimate. So now, the final metric we need is that Minecraft Earth's mass and the Minecraft Sun's mass. Yes, there is visual apparent magnitude, but to find that out, I need the flux dent- Yeah, I'm not doing that, I'll just use the Earth Sun's. The Minecraft Earth's mass is way easier to find out. This is a math warning, if you don't like math or get bored by math, then skip to the time on screen. We're gonna be doing a lot of math to find out this mass. With math. Okay, enjoy. We can use the equation for gravity, or F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Where F is the force of gravity, G is the universal gravitational constant, M1 and M2 are the masses of the two objects, and r is the distance between them, squared. In this case, the radius of the Minecraft Earth. Using the gravitational constant of 27 meters per second squared that arrived in this video, mapping the Minecraft square Earth onto a sphere to find the radius, and doing some quick substitution, you can calculate the mass of the Minecraft Earth is a whopping 1.16 times 10 to the 26th kilograms or around 19 times the mass of our Earth. Now for the Sun's mass. If we look at it from Earth, the Minecraft Sun appears to be around 9 degrees wide. That is, the degree you have to turn your head to get from cursor edge to edge of the Sun is around 9 degrees. Because angular size relationship with distance is linear, and assuming that the Minecraft Sun is as far away from the Earth as ours is, which is a big assumption, we can use this formula to find the diameter of the Minecraft Sun in all of its glory. This turns out to be just around 14.7 million miles, or around 17 times that of the actual Sun. So after using that measurement to find the volume of the Minecraft Sun, or 1.66 sextillion cubic miles, and assuming it has the same density as our Sun, we get a final mass of the Minecraft Sun, 2.337 times 10 to the 33 kilograms, or around 1,175 times the mass of the real sun. Finally, we have everything we need to calculate the value of the Minecraft world. Plugging it all into our formula, we get this. The Minecraft Earth is valued at zero, point zero 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 four eight dollars or one two thousandth of a cent that is worthless the culprit for this insanely low number is the mass of the minecraft earth all of the figures are relatively consistent with what they would be for the real Earth itself. The only one that sticks out is their ratio of masses. This formula devalues planets that have a mass far larger or smaller than that of our Earth. 
and sadly the Minecraft Earth is one of those planets that is very different. But whether you want to value the Earth at 3.82 quadrillion dollars or one two thousandth of a cent, something you can't measure is the emotional and therapeutic value of a world. Priceless memories, friendships, and entertainment were forged on these worlds. And really, the most valuable thing in all of a Minecraft world is you, the player, worth more than every diamond in every single world combined. So thank you. Thank you for watching. I really value you making it to the end. Please do consider subscribing if you did enjoy and learn something. And as always, peace out. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.